Praise the Lord. Matthew, the 14th chapter, verse 22 or 27. When you have it, say, I got it. You see somebody doesn't have a Bible. Amen. After service, help them download the Bible. But right now, just help them with your Bible. Matthew 14, 22 to 27 says, In straightway, Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and go before him unto the other side. While he sent the multitudes away, read. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. They cried out for fear. Read last verse 27. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. Again, Father, I thank you. I ask you right now in Jesus' mighty name. Look on these, your people. Would you touch them and strengthen them and bless them? Right now, by your mighty grace, thank you for what you have done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you put your Bible to the side and clap your hands? Hallelujah. Would you look at somebody and tell them he will walk on your storm? That's what I want to talk to you for a few minutes about. It is so important for us to realize, amen, that Jesus is concerned about his people. Amen. He is so concerned about his people many times. Amen. We feel alone. We feel disenfranchised. We feel like nobody really cares and loves us. But the truth is, uh, one of those songs they used to sing all the time, Jesus knows all about my troubles. Come on. He will guide until the day is done. There's not a friend like the lonely Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. He is concerned about us. Amen. He understands what is going on in our lives. We become so focused in on what we face. Many times we are not paying attention to those things that are going on around us. Praise the Lord. Amen. I, I sent out a little uh, meme this morning. That it was a guy with the whole shoes. He had, a, he had holes all in his shoes. His shoes were beat up and tattered. And the meme said this, uh, what you are taking for granted is somebody else's answered prayer. Praise the Lord. It's easy. It's easy, you know. It's easy. You're looking at your ramen noodles. Praise the Lord like it's nothing. But there's somebody that don't have nothing. And they would love to get a bowl of ramen noodles. Praise the Lord. And it's so easy to take for granted the goodness of the Lord and not realize that he is working on your behalf. Praise the Lord. He is moving in powerful ways. Amen. Delivering and setting free people. Amen. All over the world. Amen. And this chapter here begins, it's interesting because it really begins with the story of John the Baptist. Praise the Lord. He heard the fame of Jesus. Amen. And he, he began to become afraid. He I think uh, Herod, uh, even though he should have known better, he believed in reincarnation because he believed that uh, Jesus was John the Baptist come back to life. Praise the Lord. Amen. He believed John the Baptist had been risen from the dead and he was out there doing these mighty works. He was so intimidated by this man's ministry. Amen. He felt as if even John the Baptist could overcome a beheading. Praise the Lord. And so the Bible says and tells us the story of how John ended up losing his life. How Herod, a man, was hooked up, a man, with his brother's wife. Praise the Lord. Are you talking about keeping it in the family? A man, Herod, was keeping it in the family. And John, John preached against him. Now that tells us something about the boldness of John when he saw injustice, when he saw sin. Amen. He didn't mind calling a spade a spade. Many times when we see things that are not right, 
we are so busy trying to be the peacemaker that we will leave the person right in the calamity, leave them in the sin. But that wasn't the case with John the Baptist. John was so concerned and so stood so strong for righteousness that John spoke up and said, that's not your wife. Praise the Lord. You got to understand some things. When, when things are not right, somebody, a man's got to stand up and say they're not right. Somebody say hallelujah. And of course, John, when he said these things, it irritated her. Amen. Irritated her so much so, amen, that she had to devise a plan, amen, to get John the Baptist off the sea. And all the Bible says, Herod's birthday came in verse number six, amen. And, and then the daughter of this woman, praise the Lord, uh, was given to dance for Herod, praise the Lord. And the Bible says, she danced so well before him. It says in verse number six, it pleased him. I don't know what she was doing, praise the Lord. I don't know what the name of that dance was, praise the Lord. But that dance took John the Baptist's head off, praise the Lord. And the Bible says in verse number seven, when she had finished dancing, Herod had promised to, uh, by oath to give her whatsoever she asked. And the Bible says in verse number eight, the mother instructed her, give me John the Baptist's head in a charger. My God, and, and the king was sorry, the Bible says. Nevertheless, for the oath's sake, and them which sat with him at meat, he commanded it to be given her. Praise the Lord. And so he gives us the backstory to tell us why, my God, he was concerned about John the Baptist coming back from the dead. My Lord, he figured he had taken this man's head off, and now he was back even more powerful than he was before. And the Bible says, and he sent and beheaded John in the prison. Lord, have mercy. John's in the jail. Y'all know the story. John was in the jail and heard about Jesus, and, and he sent some of his disciples over to where Jesus was and said, Are you the one, or should we look for another? And I want to tell you, sometimes it seems like Jesus is not there, amen, but he's got a greater purpose and greater plans, amen, and his plans don't always include us. We've got to understand that we only serve for a time and a season, and there's some things that we might have to go through and some trials that we might have to face, amen, that will not diminish the glory of God, but they will allow the plan of God to go forward. Somebody shout hallelujah. And the Bible says here, and my God, John, John's disciples came and took up his body, buried it, and went and told Jesus. Jesus heard it and departed hence by ship and to a desert place apart. Amen. This was greatly troubling to Jesus because John had died. He knew it was within the plan and purpose of God, but nonetheless, he was troubled by it. And he departed into a, a desert place. And there, my God, his disciples heard about it and followed him on foot out of the cities. Mm, and the Bible says in verse number 14, and Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude. Mm, and while, while he was in this process, he was moved with compassion. He felt something. Even though John had died, even though John had given up the ghost, John had been beheaded, Jesus still had room for compassion on people. Somebody shout hallelujah. Bible says he healed the sick, which shows me that he still had providence. He still had power. He still had the ability to deliver John. But even though he had that ability to do it for some reason or another, he did not deliver him. And the Bible says when evening was come, the disciples came to him in this desert place, my God, and said, and said now the time is past. Let's send the multitudes away. And many went into the villages by themselves, victuals. And the Bible says in verse 16, Jesus said unto them, they need not depart. Give them to eat. And 
And y'all know the story of the five fish, the five loaves and the two fishes. And Jesus performed a mighty miracle right there in that place. My God, there was so much, a man, a power of God manifested, so much deliverance manifested that after it was done, they were still collecting up goods. I want to tell somebody, God knows how to get you what you need. God knows how to fix your situation. He knows how to take little and make it into much. Somebody shout hallelujah. The Bible says they did all eat in verse 20. They all eat and were filled and took up the fragments that remained and filled up 12 baskets. <laughs> My God, the Bible tells us it's about 5,000 men besides women and children. <laughs> and Jesus, my God, straightly constrained his disciples to get in a ship, <laughs> to go before him to the other side. And my God, the Bible says he sent the multitudes away. <laughs> he had a plan for them. <laughs> he had a purpose for them, but he knows that <laughs> in order for this to transpire, I've got to separate myself. <laughs> I've got to move away from them. <laughs> I've got to give them a chance to show that they trust me. If God doesn't back up off of you, you'll never prove that you trust him. If he doesn't move away from you, you'll always think you're on the inside. You'll always think you trust him. You'll always think you believe him. But i got to tell you, sometimes you can't feel him. Sometimes he feels far away. Sometimes he's not in the thunder. He's not in the earthquake. He's not in the fire. But sometimes you got to learn to wait for the small, still voice. Somebody shout hallelujah. My God. And so he constrained them, told them go to the other side. And you got to understand right there in verse 23. After he had sent the multitudes away, he went to the mountain to pray. And when the evening was come, he was praying all day long. Sometimes a little pity pat prayer won't work. Sometimes you got to pray until you pray. You got to pray until your flesh is weak. You got to pray till everybody's gone. You got to pray sun up to sun down. You got to pray till you feel the fire on the inside. I'm coming to tell somebody learn to pray. But learn to pray through somebody shout glory. My God, and the Bible said, he prayed all night long. He was there alone. In verse 24, he said, now the ship was in the midst of the sea. They had gotten halfway around. My God, and then the storm came around. When, when you get halfway, you're not close enough to one end, nor are you close enough to the other. That's when the storm comes. The storm catches you at a time when you were least prepared. The storm catches you when you can't take care of yourself. When you have no life jacket on. When you have no extra resources. The storm comes when nobody can help you. When father and mother forsake you. That's when the Lord shall take you up, shall glory. The Bible says here, he's walking. My God, in the midst of him, the toss with waves. The wind is contrary. It is the fourth watch of the night. And then comes Jesus. You got to know when Jesus shows up. You can't depend on yourself. You can't depend on your pocket. You can't depend on your credit card. Your debit card. You got to depend on the one that made you. The creator of the whole world. You got to learn to trust him in spite of it all. Somebody shout hallelujah. 
the Bible says he it is then that he came walking on the storm I don't know what your storm is I don't know what you're facing I don't know what your hardship is but I want to tell somebody if you just hold on and trust him if you just be patient and wait a minute weeping may endure for a night but joy comes in the morning James 1 and 2 said my brethren count it all joy tell somebody count with me please count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation knowing this that the trying of your faith is going to work patience but let patience have a perfect work tell somebody let God work on you that storm is not to kill you that storm is not to destroy you but that storm is there to make you the storm is there to make you Bible says here it's the fourth watch of the night deepest part of the water no help nowhere and then he comes a walking. Notice he doesn't come a flying. Notice he doesn't come a running. He comes a walking. Many times we want God to jump in before we really get in. But he comes walking. Praise the Lord. Bible says it's the fourth watch in the night and he's walking. And the problem is, when they see him walking, they are troubled by what they see. You know, when you got trouble, everything looks like more trouble. Praise the Lord. You know, when bills come in the mail, all the mail look like bills. Come on, somebody. When you got an ache in one part of your body, it feels like the rest of it is hurting too. Praise the Lord, when one, yeah, I don't know how many of y'all can say this, when one person get on your nerve, it seems like everybody want to get on my nerves. Because you got to understand the storm is there to make you. The storm is there to shape you. The storm is there to turn you into the person you need to be. The storm is there to reveal to you that Jesus has come to walk on your storm. We've got to get to this place that we accept the reality that a storm is a disturbance of the atmosphere. It's marked by wind and rain, snow, hail, sleet, thunder, and lightning. That's in the weather system. But a storm can come to your pocket. A storm can come to your children. A storm can come to your health. A storm can come to your community. A storm can walk in your house. You got to know it. Storms come in all sorts. They come in all sorts. But one thing about storms, they disturb and agitate the state that you are in. You know, when back in the old days, before they had washing machines. I know y'all young people don't know about this. They used to wash everything in a wash tub. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about now. Had a wash tub. And when they sent you to the wash tub, you just dropped the clothes in there. You didn't put a bunch of them. You put one or maybe two pieces. And once it got in there, because you didn't want to get your hands really in there, you just lay it in there. And grandma said, no, no, that ain't going to work. You got to take some of that borax. Y'all, some of y'all don't know nothing about no borax. Y'all got arm and a hammer you know, and gangs, sweet smelling stuff. We had borax and that brown soap. Anybody know about that brown soap? 
Come on, that brown soap was for dishes, for bodies, for clothes. Lord, have mercy. That thing never wore out either. That thing was this size for six years. Come on, somebody. <laughs> but Grandma would say, you got to agitate my God, to get that dirt out. Uh, mm, my God, until you agitated that, uh, until you start scrubbing a little bit, uh, you're going to get rid of the ring around the column. Uh, it's going to take more than sitting it in the water. Uh, if you're going to get rid of the mess that's in your life, uh, God's got to agitate some things. Uh, mm, he's got to move you. Uh, he's got to shake you. Uh, he's got to put you in the storm. My God. God, I tell you, God's got to put you in the storm. So he give you a little agitation. Storms bring agitation. Praise the Lord. Agitation, man. You know, now they, they make these fancy washing machines. They don't have that little agitation thing on them. Before you put your clothes in the washing machine, that little thing looked like little propeller wings. And that little thing, that's all it do, the whole cycle. That's it. And your clothes will get pulled down and pulled back up. Pulled down and pulled back up. Pulled down and pulled back up. And that's what God is doing to the saints. He's, he's letting some things pull you down. <laughs> and then pull you back up. <laughs> I won't let you fall. <laughs> I won't drown you. <laughs> I'll help you. I won't leave you. I won't forsake you. I'll be with you. I will walk in your storm. The Bible says when they saw him, they said it's a spirit. It's amazing in church. Folk believe in spirits more than they believe in God. Saints be sending me a text. Pastor, I saw something move. I saw a shadow. Pastor, what should I do? Go to sleep. Y'all better hear me. Praise the Lord. Somebody said one time, they said, Pastor, I went to this church and saw a spirit move in the church. I saw a spirit move behind the church. I said, really? They said, yeah, I th think they thought I was going to say something. Really? What did he look like? How big was he? And way about yay big, I saw it. I said, you did? I said, did you see the one that come to our church? <laughs> You got to know the devil's showing up everywhere. Praise the Lord. The devil's showing up everywhere. Don't act like he ain't coming in here. Some of y'all brought him in here the first time you came in here. Brought the bona fide devil in here. Praise the Lord. And they saw him and they said, it's the spirit. And instead of being excited that Jesus was coming to get them, they were afraid. They thought it was a ghost. Not a holy one either. They thought it was a phantom. They said, man, not only are we in a storm, but something is coming to get us. Praise the Lord. And you got to understand this. My God, how the Bible says in 1 Peter 4 and 12, love, take it not strange concerning the fiery trials, which are to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. But he tells them in the next verse, bitch, I said, huh? when you start going through, start praising it. Huh? Start worshiping it. Because huh? that means huh? Jesus is coming. That. Huh? Tell somebody Jesus is coming. That. Huh? Mm, he's coming. That. Huh? It may look bad right now. Huh? I may seem like it. Huh? I'm not going to make it. That. Huh? But sooner or later, huh? he's coming. That. Huh? Through the Storm. He's coming through the rain. He's coming through the heartache. He's coming through the pain. I'm going to praise him. So 
I want to encourage somebody. Ushers, I need you to move that, please. If you are in a storm, I'm inviting you to come up. If not, just stay there. You're in a storm. If you're in a storm, come on up. 